I gotta say, that never gets old. Hey everybody, it's Zach. And if you're like me, you've been spending the last couple weeks wondering, what is inside that denim? That's right, tonight we've got a classic tennis shoe teardown featuring the legendary Nike Air Tech Challenge 2. We're gonna find out what's inside this shoe and find out, is this visible air really all that visible? Now the first thing I noticed when tearing these down is that the heel counter is kind of the same as the Vapor Cage 4s from Nike, and that is it is as smooth as butter. It just cuts right through with a knife, and that is kind of a dull blade because I didn't change it even, and it just went right through it. Now when you come through the shoe, immediately you come upon that visible air pocket. Now this is not zoom air like the newer Nikes, this is what they call visible air. It was one of their first iterations of the Nike Air in the shoe. And what is so interesting about it is it's three vacuoles in the back part of the shoe, in the rear foot of the shoe. And when you pop through it, you do hear that sound, which is really neat. But what I find even and cooler is, it is an air pocket. There is forced air in there. But the cooler thing is, is it uses these vacuoles, so it's almost like springs too. So it is one big contained air pocket, but it's segmented off as well into these three sections. So when you press on it, they kind of compress and act as springs. So you're getting the air plus the spring effect. So that was actually pretty cool technology for one of Nike's first iterations of the air units, not necessarily air zoom yet. One of the coolest things about these shoes, I think, is the non-removable insole. And it's basically a shag carpet, which I just find hilarious. <laughs> really cool feature on these shoes. Now, when you take the upper off the Nike Air Tech Challenge 2s, you'll see it is all that synthetic leather that goes around your heel as well as the tongue. When you get up into the forefoot, though, it is that woven material. It doesn't breathe at all, there's no air channels, but I actually do like this synthetic leather material just for walking around. It actually is really comfortable. When playing tennis though, as you can see during the play test video, I was getting pretty sweaty in these shoes. They do trap a lot of heat, but just for walking around, it is a super comfortable material. Now, who needs a shank when you have all this material in the midsole? We've got a 2.9 centimeter heel height with a 1.4 centimeter heel to toe drop. That is just an enormous amount of material in the midsole, and it is hard and firm, so honestly, a shank in these shoes, I'm not sure what they would do. Now, the Nike AirTech Challenge 2s do have a slightly inflared last. It is borderline straight last much different than the newer Nike models for sure. And as you can see, you really can see through the visible air. Your move, Zoom Air. All right, so I really wanna see what the face of this visible air looks like. So I'm gonna tear these things down front to back. And we're gonna see what it looks like. That's really neat. Check that out. So cool. Now I thought it was only intellectually honest and fair to do the durability test on these shoes. Now for the weight of the Nike AirTech Challenge 2s, uh, the durability wasn't all that great. You had about two millimeters of damage on the outsole, even on this bumper guard outsole. And on the upper durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, just went right through that leather. It did not get through to the second layer, but uh, the leather was destroyed that, you know, fake leather on top was destroyed. So it, not the most durable shoes for the court, but considering how thick the outsole is in some areas and how much of that faux leather you get up there, that synthetic material, you know, they probably wouldn't break down all that fast just because of how bulky the materials were. But you can see with this classic shoe, how far tennis shoe technology has come because now you have shoes that are feather light compared to these and more durable. So year after year, we're getting better and better and better fitting the elite athlete's foot. Now, while I don't think I would trust these at six all in the final set of the US Open Finals, I do think that these are pretty cool shoes to kick around in, and they were really neat to see the inside of. It is really awesome to see how tennis shoe technology is continuing to evolve. So if you wanna see more classic teardowns as well as teardowns, play test and durability test of the best shoes of this year, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you'll always be up to date with the latest tennis shoe technology. That's it for me for tonight. So until the next shoe, hope everyone has a great day, great night, wherever you're tuning in from, and I'll see you next time.